could say that the title of this homily is Hell is Real. Many times, brothers and sisters, we hear um, a kind of a quaint saying that people will say today, and they say this. They say, I don't believe that a loving God would send anybody to hell. And what happens with that statement is this. If we dig underneath what's motivating that, like what's the implication? What's being said? I don't believe that a loving God would send anybody to hell. If the underpinning thought about that is that then people should be able to do whatever it is that they want and God will just accept that, well, that's pride and it's presumption. If, however, the person is tapping into the truth of God is merciful and does everything he can to try to get people to enter into eternal life, which is what he wants them to have, then that's God's mercy. And Jesus in the gospel today specifically talks about how he came not to condemn, but rather he came to save. But he makes it quite clear that those who reject his word and his teaching, he does not condemn them because, again, he is remaining faithful to his nature. However, they condemn themselves. Another quaint saying that we hear is, gee, you know, people... um, can't imagine people choosing to to do that. Well, it's very simple. They get deceived. A couple of days ago, we celebrated the memorial of Our Lady of Fatima. And the Blessed Virgin Mary specifically showed Lucia, Jacinta, and Francisco hell. And said specifically to them, pray and offer sacrifices for sinners. Because many go there. Many go to hell. Because there is no one to offer sacrifice for them. That is, to offer up prayer and sacrifices like fasting. For God to send grace to convert the people while they're still living. So that they don't end up in hell. So we want to recognize something very true. God has a goal for everybody. The loving God wants everybody to be in heaven. That's his, that's his desire. That's his will. But the loving God who loves us so much that he will not force us. Instead, he wants us to be like him, capable of love. Therefore, he gives us free will. Therefore, he gives us a choice whether to accept his love and whether to love back. This loving God will confirm whatever it is that people choose. Not confirming an approval, but confirming in terms of if a person dies in a state of having rejected God, God remains faithful to them, still loves them, they still stay in existence. But they have to experience the consequences of their actions because they did not choose to let God save them. We want to remember something, and it's very clear that for us, before we come to know Jesus, humanity's original default is hell. That's that's humanity's default. It's because God sent Jesus to save us and wants us all to accept that salvation that there's the possibility of heaven. So, today, we ask the Lord for the grace that we need to To not only believe personally for ourselves, but to also recognize the need today for a bit of a a, a more sober mindset about our call to mission. Why is it that the Holy Spirit sent Paul and Barnabas out to preach the good news? Why did the Holy Spirit commission them? If it was just this kind of a thing of God loves everybody, he's already taken care of it, that kind of a thing. It's because specifically God wants us to enter into the life that he has for us. He wants every single person to know what it means to be a beloved son or daughter through Jesus Christ. The fact that God might, in a mysterious way not known to us, save people 
who do not know the gospel, the fact that there's that possibility for God to act in his mysterious ways does not mean that we, as a Christian people, can not confront the uncomfortable fact of having to proclaim the gospel to a world that is contrary to it. Sometimes, out of a desire to just get along with people, or to not have an opinion about something, or to not cause waves or conflict or anything like that, we silence the message of the gospel, and at the same time, what we end up doing is we kind of proclaim a lie. We end up proclaiming a lie that, that, that God is okay with just everybody and everything that everybody does. And that's just not true. Jesus died on the cross specifically because sin is an issue. Jesus died on the cross to show the length of his love for us. And he's risen from the dead to proclaim to us a newness of life that he's calling us all into. And let's face it, whether it is the part of the gospel of the, for, of the necessity to repent of sin and to accept the forgiveness of God, we can reject that. And if we do reject that, well, where do we end up? If, we, if a person rejects that truth, where do they end up? Hell. Because the very thing that would save them, they've rejected. The very idea that they would even need to be saved. You see, it's kind of like a, life, uh, a lifeguard at the beach. If a person who a lifeguard is trying to save fights against the lifeguard, thinking, I don't need to be saved... The person will drown. The person will drown. And today, in today's day and age, we have, unfortunately, so many people who are ignorant of what it is that they are doing. And at the same time, ignorant that the God who loves us so much isn't looking to condemn people. He doesn't want to say this is sin in order to say shame on you. He wants to say this is sin because when you recognize what it is and when you recognize how it's bringing your soul to hell, in sorrow and in repentance, you will turn to me and you you will ask for mercy. This is what God wants. His great mercy to be made manifest. But also we can reject sometimes the gospel of the resurrection as well. Jesus says it very clearly. Whoever rejects me and does not accept my words has something to judge him. The word that I spoke. And so sometimes we might believe enough to get saved. That is to make sure that we're going to get to heaven. Eventually someday even if we have to pass through purgatory. You know like. It kind of like, you know, in Monopoly, go to, go, to, go, to, go to purgatory, go directly to purgatory, do not pass go. Monopoly, the board game. I was just messing around. So anyway, but sometimes we can reject what Jesus says about the resurrection and the life that he's calling us to. And what I would say is this, is that that doesn't end us so much in hell as it does, allows hell to continue to have too much of an influence here on earth, because Jesus wants specifically to release heaven on earth through us. So the life of the resurrection that the Lord calls us to is the life of holiness and the life of, of grace and the life of manis- manifesting the gifts of the Holy Spirit. The Lord is calling us to that, and yet, you know, sometimes... We don't believe. Sometimes we, we kind of hold back. And we can imagine how the saints in heaven are probably, you know, just waiting, waiting. Is there going to be a generation that understands the things that we were doing? You know, the canonized saints. The things that we were doing ahead of time. That it's for them too. Not just for us. So we ask the Lord for that grace not to reject his word in any way.